Hi, I'm State Senator Mike Brady, and we're starting this new show called Brady Works. And I am with my good friend and guest, Ann Beauregard, former city councilor from Ward 5, to talk about some of the things we've been doing at the State House this year in the proposed budget initiatives and a few other things. And first of all, we're, we're taping the show on behalf of Nurses Week as well. We want to thank all our healthcare workers and especially our nurses. And this is a week to celebrate all the hard work they've done. So God bless all the nurses out there. Uh, and also, if anybody wants to reach me, my number at the State House is 617-722-1200, 617-722-1200. And my email at the State House is michael.brady at masenate.gov. And one of the most important things I want to lead off the conversation today is um, people need to get vaccinated. And I want to thank all our healthcare workers, our hospitals, and especially Sue Josh from the Brockton Neighborhood Health Center. She went above and beyond to go to our federal government when the administration was changed in their mind every other week of how we're going to get the vaccines. And it's been very difficult for people, especially living in the Brockton area. So she went to the federal government and got vaccines distributed directly to Brockton residents so they can get vaccinated at the Shaw Center in Brockton. And if people want to get vaccinated, they can go to BNHC, which stands for Brockton Neighborhood Health Center.org, and go online. Or if they have trouble, they can always call my office and we can reach out to the health center. But they have been vaccinating 1,000 people a day in trying to get the numbers up to get more and more people vaccinated. I was lucky to get my first vaccination a couple weeks ago, and I'm scheduled to go back on May 3rd. But it's so important people get their vaccination. Um, it's about saving lives. And I also heard that the week of April vacation, which just recently ended, the numbers were down. People were not getting the vaccines. Now, we don't know if people went away on vacation, but also some of the misinformation out there with on the internet that you, we've got to listen to our healthcare experts. They're the knowledgeable people and our professionals. It's so important people get vaccinated. So, and thank you for having uh, attended this with me today. And I know you had a few questions. I just do want to let the people in Brockton know I serve as chairman of the Public Service Committee. I'm also the vice chairman of Economic Development, and I also serve on the Ways and Means Committee, the Veterans Affairs Committee, the Consumer Protection, Election Laws, and Committee on Global Warming. So thank you for attending with me today, Ann. Uh, thank you for having me, and just so everybody realizes, there's going to be different guests all along. The Senator knows many great people in this community. I'm just honored to be uh, on here for the kickoff for uh, the uh, original. I had, it's no secret that I contact the Senator regularly. His uh, team will attest to that, and they've been working really hard during COVID. So I'm going to mention that you highlighted that you're with economic development, and I had mentioned that I found it really important to let the small businesses in particular know what is available. It's a little complicated, they realize, and just mention how your team has been helping small businesses navigate um, these uh, uncharted waters. Well, we had reached out to many businesses, especially not just the Brockton, but the South Shore. There were grants available, and we helped some of the businesses in, uh, in the area to apply for grants up to $25,000. And we're working with both the state and the federal government to get these resources available to the businesses. And it's been tough on a lot of businesses. A lot of businesses have struggled out there. Um, some businesses have closed, like in Hanover, and some in Brockton, that's part of my district. And people are suffering. And some businesses were able, through these grants, to keep their employees employed. So they helped to pay their bills, to pay their rent, their mortgages, and so forth. And uh, they were able to apply and receive some grants. And some of the business in the downtown area of Brockton and we're reaching out because hopefully with the new federal initiatives that there's more funding coming that hopefully we can help these businesses apply for more grants down the road. And that's just one aspect. I know there's a lot of bills out there. There's thousands of the, and thousands of bills that get filed in the legislature every year. And another big issue is sports betting that a lot of my blue collar constituents, I don't do it. I'm not good with sports betting, but a lot of my constituents, uh, they want it. Every state around us has put it forth and uh, we're losing revenue. And people are driving to other states or, or they can go on the internet and have other resources. And the money could be coming back to the Commonwealth to provide jobs for people and revenue. And the big thing is revenue. And um, thank goodness of the efficiency of the colleagues in the State House, in the House and the Senate, we were able to apply and 
get more local funding for our district. And school funding was put on hold last year with the Student Opportunity Act, which has been so important. We passed it a while back, but because of the COVID epidemic last year, it got put on hold. So this year we're gonna be implementing it. And, and for instance, the local aid coming into the city of Brockton for this coming fiscal year is gonna be over $212 million. It's gonna be the highest increase ever in the history of the Commonwealth, never mind the city of Brockton. And I was a big supporter of the Education Act years ago and all these other initiatives. I served when I was a little younger on the school committee in Brockton. I served as a city council before getting into the state house. And I know how important education is for our students. And I'm a big supporter K through 12, not just the uh, first grade to 12th grade, but early childhood education and also our colleges. We have Master Community College in Brockton. I uh, went there and when I was after, right after I graduated from high school and then I worked there with a grant to help women and minorities get jobs in the construction field. And a lot of people that can't afford to go to these top expensive colleges, it's a great local community college and then they can use these transfer credits to go to colleges such as Bridgewater State and other universities. So Bridgewater University it's called now, but so important to support our colleges as well and our local state universities. So I'm glad to be a part of that. The other thing is unrestricted local aid, which is so important. We've done an increase this year for that as well, and that's gonna be over $23 million of unrestricted local aid. And for Brockton, that's an increase, that's 23 million just for the city of Brockton plus, but it's an increase of over $778,000. So important to get this funding for the city of Brockton. Brockton is not a rich, wealthy town. A lot of people are struggling, and we need that local aid to come into Brockton, so that's so important. This is all very encouraging news, and just so uh, people that are watching realize, this is a couple of uh, Broughton High students that are part of the production team here today, and uh, want to wish them well, and we're grateful that they're here. And uh, Broughton Community Access gets this information out to people, so I'm going to ask you two more questions. We talked about the people struggling. We are aware of the various laws, both at the federal level and the, I'm referring to them as almost a com compassionate com commitment with the evictions and other concerns and you know how to nav navigate, um, how do people find out where they can get help or how they can help someone else? Well, as I mentioned, they can always contact our offices. We also have resources in the city of Brockton and we wanna help out both the homeowners and the renters out there because there's a lot of uh, homeowners who live in, uh, say it's a three family or two family, they are struggling to pay their mortgages. We've passed legislation to help both the homeowners and the renters in the past. There is more legislation pending. And every year, we just started the new year this uh, January. We're into our fourth month right now. We're going into our fifth month in the month of May coming up. But it's so important to help both entities out because, exactly. you know, yes. you, 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 the prices in Brockton, as we know, and even the Commonwealth of Massachusetts have gone through the roof. I mean, people are getting outbid on their houses. They're getting more money than they put their house on the market, but it becomes unaffordable for your average person. We also have a program with the state with the Mass Housing Department. I'm going to be meeting with them later, and I'll have another show on that. But there is funding to get up to $25,000 down payment on a house if you work in a uh, union or a state or municipal government entity, and also to refinance to get the low-interest loans. And, um, you know, interest rates are low now. Now is the time to take advantage of that before they go up again. But we are doing a lot of things in our downtown. There's been a lot of support with state funding for our downtown to refurbish these old factories, these old buildings that were vacant. Uh, downtown's been through some tough changes over the years, as we know, and we're doing something on a Petronelli way. We've done some other initiatives to provide housing for veterans in, in, uh, on Spring Street years ago and on Main Street with the old Kresge building. Veterans have press, first preference for that. That's really in the old United Furniture building, which is on the corner of Center in Montello, that's in the process of looking for some state funding and help as well. And we've seen what's happened with other buildings. I know some of the condos on Court and Center Street, they were vacant for many years. Fortunately, we got help with that. And then on Montello Street, the old Stalin and Dean building, um, the gentleman who developed that has done an unbelievable job, and those are beautiful inside. Uh, this is this is all very encouraging. Again, uh, people don't realize I contact and have for decades now the state house. Remember, 
These people work for you and they're trying their best, but if you don't contact them, they, they might not know where you need the help. And again, the senators can be reached at 617-722-1200. And his team is ready, the extensive amount of experience, and they are aware of the different, uh, how would I say, avenues to take uh, place. I myself am very excited about the economic development piece, and I know that you've been really positive with support for any kind of medical research, any kind of biotech, and this community is ripe and ready for it with all the STEM um, programs that are, are taking place and all the individuals preparing themselves. We're a very diverse community, so that allows us to have much talent, and we can do a whole lot actually uh, exporting um, and, and we do so now, which, I mean, as we're sitting here, we're, we're on uh, 1 North Main Street, there's a couple of places that export cars to Cape Verde and Haiti, and, you know, these are, these are other, how would I say, businesses that people aren't inclined to realize exist in their own communities. So we've been very grateful that you're, you're there as, you know, your whole office, your team, and I'm going to put out a shout out because people don't realize that last, uh, Tuesday night, you were on uh, a Zoom call. This was really positive with uh, Mass Cultural uh, Council, and there's a new director, and he had good news for us, and I wanted you to highlight how that's an opportunity for people. Again, we know the small businesses suffered, the restaurants, little gift shops, all these great places, but also, um, you know, a talent, musician, and performers, and since Brockton is, how would I say, it, um, very, blessed to have incredible amount of talent and I just wanted to allow you to highlight on Absolutely. that. Absolutely and, and when we had the Zoom meeting I mentioned Vinnie McCrina who was a music Thumbs director up. in Brockton High School and Brockton High has some of the most greatest talent. We, we've known that so, so many great uh, artists whether it be in music or physical art have gone on to college and then started their own businesses and some have come back to help mentor and train the next generation and Sounding it's so lucky. important we support the arts in the cultural arts and we did approve and we talked about this funding that for every dollar spent you get about five dollars back on your investment in brockton has so much rich history and talent out there and we even talked about the the not only the fuller craft museum but the brockton historical society and in all former fire chief galligan has been heading up that and we have so many great people who volunteer up there it's so important to recognize the talent we have in the city of brockton and we are funding that, and that's so important. And also, you mentioned transportation. We also passed a landmark climate bill recently because, you know, we've seen what is happening to our environment, our solar caps melting and so forth. And some people not, may not believe it, but it's happening. And we have to invest in renewable energy and get away from the fossil fuels. And we also have to make more energy efficient vehicles and transportation. That's why I was a big supporter of the commuter rail. It comes right through Brockton. It's got three stops. It's been great. You can you can get a half hour ride into South Station. You don't have to deal with traffic. Or you can go down the Cape hopefully in the summertime. And uh, we, we'll utilize that. And that helps with investment in Brockton. And you know, we've seen the traffic tie-ups all over the city and it's starting to build up again as we speak. Yes, it Getting is. people in to use those public transportation issues. Now Brockton Air Transit does a great job. They have uh, not only the bad buses, but they also help with our elderly population, getting them the transportation they need to go to their doctor's appointments and so forth, dial a bat. So, so important to invest in that. And this will help our environment out as well. So the more we invest in good, clean, renewable energy and get away from the fossil fuels, and these initiatives put forth, so we're doing this, and not only at the state level, but our federal government is doing this as well. So it's so important. And helping the people get better access to and from, so it helps our businesses out, it helps people to get to the schools they gotta go, or they're just living their daily, daily life, yeah, you know? So we're supporting that, that's so important. I think this is, this is all great news that we're hearing these tidbits here and tidbits there. Can you uh, highlight a couple of the bills? And, and so everyone realizes that you can contact their office, you can email them and talk about which bills you support or something you'd like to see transpire. It takes more than a minute for all this to pass. We want to clear that up. But your input is essential. And it, it, speaking for some of the 
you know, the variety of input that goes into Yealy, I mean, from something as simple, we'll, we'll laugh at this because it's amusing, Whitman, Massachusetts, being renowned for its Toll House cookie, and, you know, the state of Massachusetts, to some serious legislation that protects uh, children, um, individuals. I mean, my big thing, for example, is when we saw the Amber Alert at the mm -hmm. federal level, and then each state, you know, adopting their version, and a variety of situations um, like that. So I just, you know, if you could take a moment and name some of the bills and give the numbers so people understand S and uh, sure. H. You know, and, yeah. and just a little explanation, as I mentioned earlier, there's thousands and thousands of bills that get filed every year. Not everyone sees the light of day. They have to go through a process. They go to a subcommittee. And as the committees I mentioned, that I sort of on public service, so I'll be hearing some of the bills come before my committee. I chair. There'll be some going to economic development, some going to housing. Uh, it all depends on what area of the state that this funding or these pieces of legislation go through. I serve in the Veterans Committee. We've passed some great veterans legislation in the past. We're working on a veterans bill as we speak, but it still needs some tweaking and fixing because not every bill is perfect. And we want to protect the working families out there when we pass legislation too. So they have an opportunity to get training and to get these jobs. It's so important. But again, some bills sound great on the forefront in the, in the title, but if you read the meat and potatoes in the bill, it's not always the greatest bill. And that's why you work through these committee hearings to weed out the bad parts of the bill and straighten them out. And again, not every bill sees the light of day. Sometimes you have to refile bills year after year. And because of the COVID epidemic, which has been the most drastic thing that has affected so many lives, our heart goes out to all our people that have suffered with COVID all over the country, never mind the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. We've passed some serious legislation to help these families out, but we still have to do more in a lot of things got put on hold this year. Home rule petitions, which are normally not a big deal, and I know the city of Brockton is looking to pass one on the elections laws, but we did uh, some in other towns, and sometimes it's difficult because COVID in the legislation for COVID took first priority this year. And getting the funding, and even the funding from our federal government that helped out tremendously, uh, some of the Plymouth County uh, commissions were able to get that funding, and there was concern. We want to make sure that the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted and the money was appropriated uh, officially, and thank goodness it was, and we kept an eye on everything, and our county commissioners did a great job. Brockton received a lot of money. We would not have got the Shaw Center up and renovated, and it was in tough shape. It had been vacant. The animals were getting in there. It was left in disrepair, and in the beginning, that Shaw Center was great with the Campanelli Stadium for the semi-pro teams there, but it got left by the wayside with funding uh, cutbacks, and Thank goodness for the um, federal funding to help out. They could use that money, and that's where they are getting people vaccinated, right at the Shaw Center. They've done a great job. And again, please go to the Brockton Neighborhood Health Center's website. Uh, Sue Josh, we've got to get all these people vaccinated. That's how we're going to get the economy back up and open and people feel comfortable and uh, get back into the normal living. I know the governor's office had mentioned and even President Biden had mentioned that they're going to open people who are outside. They may not have to wear the mask. We're doing a safe social distancing today in this little get together we have today. But again, we have to get the workforce back to work. We have to get people somewhat back to a normalcy in life. I don't think we'll ever be the same. This has been probably the worst epidemic since 1918. And I can't imagine what the families went through in those eras. That was my grandparents' generation. And um, they don't have the resources we have today. And we have to pay attention to the experts out there. There's a lot of misinformation that goes out there. But I think as we move forward, and you know, as I mentioned earlier, our healthcare workers that have gone through trying times, our first responders, and, and it's been a tough year. So now some of the bills that we didn't get passed last year in the legislation, we're starting to put forth this year. And I think we have a good year coming moving forward in a, it's a good sturdy budget this year. The budget gets proposed by the governor, goes to the House of Representatives. They're dealing with it as we speak. Then it comes to the Senate. And then if there's changes, it goes to the governor and he could make any changes like amendments to the budget. And then we have to sometimes file overrides to override any of his amendments. And this funding, as I mentioned when I started this conversation, so important to the community I represent. Not only the city of Brockton, but the towns around us as well. Um, you know, people have been suffering out there, and we want to put people back to work. We want to help people pay their mortgages, pay their bills, and again, make a safe environment for people to live in. And 
We still have a lot of work to do. You know, when I was on the city council here, we passed a lot of initiatives, get 90% reimbursement to build the five elementary schools, highest increase right. ever for that. It was a great initiative, but I know that the city council, and this is the city's council decision, but they're looking to build a new public safety facility where the old high school used to be, which later became the Arnold School and the Keith School. And that's being voted on in the city council as we speak. And then they may be looking to the state for help as well. So we're keeping an eye on all of that. And traffic is, is you know, we passed uh, to make Main Street in, in uh, Warren Ave and Montello Street. Montello Street is still two ways, but we passed some legislation years ago, but without the funding. And that's why this Chapter 90 money, transportation bond bills that we've gotten for the communities that I represent, so important. Years ago, we did Route 123 Belmont Street over but we have to get more funding for transportation initiatives to help ease not only to save to cut back on pollution but to help people get around the city easily because as i spoke earlier there is traffic jams every day now and it's it's good people are getting out and about but it's getting worse and it's in and you know everybody has a car nowadays and it's like uh, it's crazy just to get around the city from one section to the other so we're, we're hoping to get more state funding for that as well uh, well, we're really excited about it because certainly we, well, I know that the number one request for most homeowners is they want their streets paved. Mm -hmm. So we sincerely hope we'll see more of that. But I believe, too, that people, when they interpret this transportation, they don't realize, again, that you emphasize so much that there's BAT, there's dial -a bat which is huge. And, again, if people have, you know, confusion about understanding if they qualify or if they can service again you can call the senator's office 617-722-1200 and another reason i mention that is because of the different circumstances old colony planning council which is what a couple of blocks away mm -hmm. from us they often talk about how the needs of people are changing we we have so many people with those uh, automatic and little uh, tr uh Wheel, um, electrical um, transportation, whether it's um, the wheelchairs themselves or the scooters, and that that's changing the, the way that sidewalks need to be built and the way the streets should go. So there's, mm -hmm. there's a whole lot of changes. We're continuously uh, adapting to a variety of situations. I believe, though, that you've given us a great foundation and I can't emphasize enough, once COVID is lifted, people don't realize you can go in and watch these hearings and uh, you can actually sign up to speak if you're supporting a particular bill or in serious opposition. I'm not going to lie to you, sometimes it's a long wait, mm -hmm. but it's worth it. I mean, having been over the years for many issues, and we encourage you of all ages because you know this this might be oh if you're if you're old enough to vote then you can submit a bill no you you can be of any age my, my advice certainly is to speak to you know other individuals to ask them for their advice on on this too but that's what you're learning and this is what you use every day every law in some way affects you and uh, so that's why and this is you know the lawmaking aspect of it but I know that they're going to tell us soon that we're winding down here. <laughs> we're going to have to. Uh, but I'm hoping that you you can highlight more, a little bit more about the COVID and get everyone feeling more comfortable about it. We're lucky we have the resources and times and, and days and what have you. And just, you know, highlight a couple of other things that you anticipate coming. Yes. Well, well this, this COVID has been probably the biggest priority lately. And, and I want to thank the Brockton Emergency Management. They have a, a bunch of mask and this is my Brockton boxes mask here <laughs> and I know you have your mask on you and um, they have plenty of supplies for safety equipment hand cleansers and so forth they have a plenty of stock it was so difficult in the beginning to get that equipment in here now they've got sure plenty was. of supplies they've been very helpful to me when I need to get residents masks or other equipment um, we are increasing testing please don't fall for the faulty information out there we need to get as many people vaccinated as possible it's so important and again the crew up at the up at the Brockton Neighborhood Health Center at the Shaw Center is doing a great job and they are vaccinating elderly people in the district so if you cannot get to the health center or get to these other sites please don't hesitate to, to contact the BNHC at bnhc.org they are going into the high rises vaccinating people elderly people that cannot leave their home and I just want to thank uh, the staff here at Brockton Community Access and the volunteers and all the students helping out today. 
you're doing a great job, and I'm honored to be here and honored to be your state senator and my own staff in the state house. Nobody does it alone. I have a great group who works with me, not only at the state house but locally in the district. And now, because of COVID, a lot of things has been done virtually. Hopefully, we'll slowly get the state house back up and open. But we've had COVID cases in the state house, and we've got to protect people's lives. That's the bottom Thanks. line. Thank you. Thank you, Ann, and thank you, everyone listening and watching today.